real pleasure to welcome all of you here to celebrate the, the publication of Yoki Driesen's new book, The Invisible Front, Love and Loss in an Era of Endless War. Yoki, as uh, many of you know, is quite simply one of the very best national security journalists in America today. He's the managing editor of Foreign Policy. Uh, he has spent nearly four years on the ground in Afghanistan and Iraq reporting and spending most of his time embedded uh, in frontline combat units. Mark and Carol Graham, the family that are at the, the center of this book, had for a long time a Norman Rockwell type family. They had three children who were all extraordinarily close. Kevin, who was the middle child, was sensitive. He was sort of the perfect one who, when his parents would say do something, he would do it without hesitation, without thinking. Jeff, his older brother, was the more ambunctious one. He drank, he was very, very good with women. He was someone who was the life of a party. Kevin would follow into the party, but would sort of sit by himself in the corner. And then Melanie, who was their young sister, she was the one that they tried to look out for. Wherever they went in the world, the three of them were a single unit. They were the three of them against the world because like many military families, as so many of you know, they moved from base to base, from country to country, and have to rebuild a social network wherever they went. Flash forward a few years. Jeff is, a, is out. He was the older of the two. He's commissioned. He's getting ready to go to Iraq. His brother Kevin, a year younger, about to enter the final summer before he'd be commissioned and also enter the army. What no one in the family knew, because Kevin had always been smart, he'd always been funny, he'd always been just the sweetheart of the family, was that there was a, a darkness inside. But they didn't find this out till, till much, much too late. He and Jeff had always played golf. That was their sport. And they were supposed to meet one morning to play. It was gonna be, gonna be one of the last rounds before Jeff left to do his last bit of training and then onto Iraq. And Kevin didn't show up. And Jeff was wondering and looking at his watch and looking at his cell phone and, and his brother wasn't there. So he called the apartment, he called his sister and said, Melanie, have you seen Kevin? And she hadn't. And she knocked on his door and didn't hear anything. And she opened the door and she saw him hanging. He had hung himself in the ceiling fan. If you read this book, you read a book about tragedy but also transformation. That's sort of where I want to begin with you, Yoki, because at the White House, the President now signs letters in the same way he does to someone who has died in combat, to someone who has committed suicide. And that was a transformation within the building itself. Should the President do the same thing? Should these be on equal levels? So the transformation is working itself through gradually. And this is not something where on the whole there are good people and there are bad people and there are heroes and there are villains. This is not black and white. This lives in the gray. And we can accept and we should and do, I think, that PTSD is real, that these invisible wounds are real. We can accept that. We can, as a society, try to think of how do we fix it. And there are people trying to do just that. But we have to just remember that this is nuanced. This is, in some ways, the epitome of a nuanced issue, that you can't simply, in a way, you could look at somebody who needs a prosthetic and say, he needs a prosthetic, give him a prosthetic, he has a prosthetic, his life goes on, he's much better. We don't have that luxury here. And for a country that cares, for Mark and Carol Graham and a family who cares, we need to bear that in mind. This does not go away for the person who has it. This does not go away for the military that has it in its ranks. This does not go away for a country that's struggling with suicide. This does not go away for a family that lost two sons and tries to get out of bed in the morning. People do it. People find a way of trying to help. And keep those two things in mind. One, this issue will be there a long time. Two, there are people out there trying to make it better. Um, with that, I, I thank you all for your time. Thank you.